When you first start learning math, you start with addition, and then you learn subtraction, which undoes that addition. And then you learn multiplication, and then you learn division, which undoes that multiplication. Years and years go by, and then you get to this thing called calculus. In calculus, you start learning how to do the derivative of a function. And now you have to learn how to undo that derivative. That's called anti-differentiation. That's what we're doing in this video. What's up, y'all? I'm Tom. This is Like a Math Class. Let's get to anti-differentiation. In physics, and sometimes in math, we have this thing called displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Now, displacement is often written as S of T. Why it's an S, I'm not sure, but that's displacement. And then velocity is written as V of T. Velocity is the first derivative of displacement. And then you have acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of displacement. So we can see that each of these things are derivatives of each other. But what happens if you have the velocity and you want to go back to the displacement? How do you do that? That is anti-differentiation. If we've already got the derivative, how do we go back up to that original equation? Well, let's look at a few examples first. Let's take a look at these three functions. We've got x squared plus 3x plus 5, x squared plus 3x minus 10, and then just x squared plus 3x. Or I guess we could also say x squared plus 3x plus 0. If we looked at the derivative of each one of these things, we would see that the derivative of this function, of any of these functions, is 2x plus 3. So what we want to do is we want to figure out how do we get from this and go back to here. Let's say we're starting at this place. So let's call that f of x. So f of x is 2x plus 3. And we want to find the antiderivative of f of x. Well, we can see that that's going to be x squared plus 3x. We can see that from right over here. But then we don't know really what we would add to this thing. Because it could be plus 5, minus 10, or plus 0. Because each one of these, when we have the derivative of these, we know that these things all disappear, or the derivative of each of these pieces is just zero itself. So if we had the antiderivative of this, we would have to say that there is some other number possible. We don't know what it is, but it's possible that there's another number added on to the end of this antiderivative. So we put this plus c on here because of that. And we call that the constant of integration. So how do we get to these two values from this? I'm going to put together some function and then we're going to find the antiderivative of this thing and we're going to see if we can find some kind of pattern within this. So we're going to look at x, x squared, x cubed, and then we'll make some generalizations from there. If we want to find the antiderivative of this, if we've got, if we've got some function and we consider our working on a piece of paper, it's generally our function and then our derivative and then a second derivative and so on. We also know with the power rule that when we're starting with a function here, when we go down, the power goes down one. So by natural progression, if we go back up, then the power is going to go up by one. So the antiderivative is going to be x squared. But now when we think of taking the derivative and we want to get to x to the first power, right? Because this, if we consider this thing, the derivative over here, right? Because we're trying to figure out exactly what are we doing. If we were here and we wanted to make this thing the derivative, we would have to take this two and we would be multiplying it out here. And what we're ultimately wanting is we're wanting there to be a value of one out here for our original function. So what would I have to multiply two by to get to one? Well, of course, you probably already figured this out. It's going to be one half. Let's check this by doing the actual derivative of this. Two times one half will be one. Subtract one from the power gives me the first power. So this is the antiderivative. Now, the other thing that we have to remember is we always have to put this plus c on here because there could have been some other constant. So we always include this plus c anytime we're taking the antiderivative. So let's think about the same thing with here. So we're going to start by saying, well, we have to go up to the third power. What would we have to multiply 3 by to get to a value of 1 right here? Now oh, we'd have to make, multiply that by 1 over 3. So again, if I did the derivative of this, 3 comes out here. We multiply it by 1 third. That's going to be 1. There's my 1. 
subtract a power from here, that's two. So now I've just done the antiderivative going from here to this way. I've just increased my power. I've created this number out, this coefficient out here, and I add C and that is going to be my antiderivative. You've probably already started figuring out the pattern here, but let's do one more. If we've got x to the third power as our original function. All right, so we know it's gonna go up to x to the fourth, and following the same pattern, if we put one fourth here, four times one fourth would give me a value of one, subtract one from this power would be cubed, and so add in our plus c, and we've found the antiderivative of x to the third. Now, what if I were to say, all right, you're so smart, what about x to the nth power? All right, so now this is where we're gonna start generalizing. So what happened is, as we did the antiderivative for each one of these things, it's got a power of one right there, we see that this power is going up. So if I've got x to the nth power, then I need to put this thing up to x to the n plus one. And a plus c, since we're right there, might as well put that plus c on there. And then what are we multiplying this thing by? Well, we're always multiplying this by one over n plus one. And so this right here, this is your antiderivative of your basic power function. It's simply called the power rule of antiderivatives, or at least that's what I call it. If you're following me so far, give me a thumbs up, like the video, and let's look at a couple examples where we can apply this power rule of antidifferentiation to a couple different examples. I'm gonna start with g of x equaling x to the negative three power. All right, so if I were to follow my power rule here, n equals negative three, so the antiderivative is going to be one over negative three plus one times x to the negative three plus one plus c. So when I simplify this, that's gonna be negative one half x to the negative two power and that's gonna be plus c. So this indeed is the antiderivative of this function. What if I had another function, h of x, and we're gonna make h of x, x to the one half power. All right, so here n is equal to one half. So the antiderivative is gonna be one over n, one half, plus one, times x to the n, one half, plus one, plus c. All I did again was, was follow this general notation. All right, so one half plus one, that's gonna be one over three over two times x to the three over two plus c. And if I have this uh, a fraction within a fraction, I always wanna simplify that. So I'm gonna have two thirds x to the three over two power plus c. All right, so what happens if I were to take the derivative of this? I would take this and I would multiply it by two thirds. Well, three halves times two thirds, that's gonna give me one. Great, there's a one there. One, uh, three halves minus one. Well, three halves minus one is one half. So once again, this is the antiderivative of this function right here. Notice as I'm getting used to this, I'm always checking by doing the derivative of my antiderivative. I'm making sure, because I'm comfortable with derivatives now, right? We've practiced derivatives a lot. So I always go back and I check my anti my antiderivative and I make sure that when I take the derivative of that, I'm getting back to my original equation. So we found the first rule of antidifferentiation, the power rule, one over n plus one times x to the n plus one plus c straightforward. I hope that was helpful. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at more rules of anti-differentiation. I'll see you there.